Hi, this is Processing Motion Part 4. Uh, today we're going to look at projectile motion. So we will take the code that we wrote in Part 3 and uh, apply it to the problem of projectile motion. So we'll start out with some calculations, uh, take those numbers, plug them into the code, and uh, see what we get. And as always, we'll try to see if uh, we can make this work on P5 as well. All right, so let's get to it. Um, okay, so first let's um, go over the problem that we'll be looking at, and that's to imagine a projectile going at uh, 85 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees. So let's first calculate the components here. So how much of that initial velocity is in the vertical direction, how much is in the horizontal direction? So to get the vertical, we do 85 sine of 60, which in your calculator will give you about uh, 73.6 meters per second. And in the horizontal, we get uh, 85 cosine of 60, which gives you about 42.5 meters uh, per second. OK, um, so we're going to take these numbers, use them to do some calculations, and uh, use them in our code. Uh, so I've written them down so we can keep track of them, but uh, we'll move on to, to doing the kinematic stuff now. Um, so to find the amount of time that the projectile will be in the air, we need to look at the uh, vertical components. In the vertical direction, the acceleration is due to gravity, so we write a g here. And we still have the uh, initial velocity y component times time at the end. Um, so if you start out at uh, ground level, so y equals 0, and you launch, and you go up in the air, and then you come back down, your initial and your final positions are at the same point, uh, vertically speaking. So you've gone somewhere horizontally. But vertically, you haven't really gone anywhere. You started on the ground, you ended on the ground. Uh, so that means that delta y in this scenario is going to be 0. And that kind of makes the math a little bit easier for our purposes. So we'll plug in a 0. You know, zeros and 1s are always nice to work with, uh, unless you're dividing by 0. That can be tricky. Um, Okay, so this is viy times t. Um, I can subtract viy from both sides equals one half gt squared. Let's not forget that this is squared squared. Okay, um, so here a uh, t can cancel on both sides. Um, so we get negative viy equals one half gt. Uh, rearranging, I get uh, t equals uh, negative 2viy over g, because I multiply 2 by both sides uh, to get rid of the 1 half, and then I divide both sides by g. Um, what's nice to notice at this point is viy is up. We're launching upward. And g is down, so these have the opposite sign. Since they have the opposite sign, um, the, the overall results of that math is negative, and we get a negative from the equation, so negative negative is positive. Um, it's good when time ends up being uh, a positive value. So t equals 2 viy over g, which uh, viy, if you remember from our component calculation, is 73.6 meters per second. G on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. And if you type this in, you get about 15 seconds. So the time that the projectile will be in the air is about 15 seconds. Let's go ahead and use that to calculate the uh, horizontal range of our projectile. For a projectile, um, horizontally speaking, 
there's no acceleration unless you're accounting for uh, friction, but we'll ignore that in this case. So I don't need uh, an acceleration term. I can just do the horizontal velocity times the time. Horizontal velocity from our component calculation uh, came to uh, 42.5 meters per second, and we just found the time, which is 15 seconds. And when you multiply those two things together, you get a horizontal range of 638 meters. Okay, so let's recap this, uh, these conclusions really quickly because um, we're gonna have to remember these numbers, right? So the initial velocity in the y direction is 73.6 meters per second. The initial velocity in the x direction is 42.5 meters per second. Uh, we found that the time is going to be 15 seconds and the horizontal range, meaning how far uh, downfield this thing is going to launch or land, is uh, going to be 638 meters. Um, we'll kind of come across most of these numbers uh, as we plug these uh, values into the code um, to simulate the projectile. So here's our code from uh, part three, uh, when we created a model for acceleration. We defined a, a bunch of variables up here to match up with the kinematics equations that we're familiar with from maybe a textbook or something like that. Um, so let's plug in the values that we calculated a moment ago uh, for our initial position and initial velocity. Uh, so we're going to launch from the left side of the screen so we can leave initial x at zero, but uh, we want to place the ground somewhere, so I'm going to place that at 500 pixels down. So not quite the bottom, which is 600. And then our initial speed that we calculated uh, for the y direction, excuse me, for the x direction was uh, 42.5, and for the y direction, was 73.6. Um, as I mentioned before, the acceleration in the horizontal direction is zero for a projectile unless you're accounting for friction. And for the vertical component, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, so we have our initial values in. All this stuff looks good. Um, I'm just going to make the fill white so that we get good contrast. Um, all of this stuff looks good. Uh, I would like to go ahead and draw the ground though, so kind of the position that we're launching from. So let's set that at uh, 500 the uh, 500 mark, so this, so this point. So we draw a line. Um, from the left side of the screen, 500, to the uh, right side of the screen, which can be marked with width, and uh, still at 500. All right, so we should have a line. We should launch from that line and go through it. OK, I saw the line, and something happened super duper fast. Uh, so let's try to slow this down a little bit. Oh, yeah, there's a couple things going wrong here. Uh, one, for uh, initial velocity in the y direction, um, in the processing window, down is positive for y. We're moving down, we're moving positive direction because the top is zero. Uh, so I should have made this negative. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at that, actually, now that we've got that correction. There we go. Uh, we got a projectile kind of going across the screen super fast. So at 30 frames per second, uh, using our standard units of measurement, the, um, the simulation that we see here is a, a bit too fast. So what I'm going to do is uh, slow this down by 10%, or a factor of 10. I'm going to move that decimal place to the left one position. Okay. Now for acceleration, I need to actually move it 
two places. So I move my decimal once here because it's meter per second. There's just one uh, second or one unit of seconds, one factor of seconds in the denominator, meter per second. For acceleration, it's meter per second squared. So there are actually two factors of seconds, There's, you know, meter per second per second. So every time I move the decimal once here, uh, I need to move it twice here. And that can be a little bit confusing, but trust me, it'll make your uh, life a lot easier just to kind of follow that, that rule. There we go. So we get the object flying through the, uh, flying through the air. And we could constrain it over here to where it could stop and land on the, the ground, but uh, for the purposes here, it's, it's really not that, not that big of a deal. Um, let's see if we can make the same thing work with our vector um, code. So for the initialized position, uh, we were starting at 0, 0,500, which corresponds to this code here, 0, 0,500. And then we want to plug this in. Instead of having two separate variables, the vector uh, kind of merges them together, right? We get 4.25 and negative 7.36 and then for acceleration there's no horizontal acceleration and there is 0 0.098 uh, acceleration in the vertical let's switch this here like we did before um, we can copy our line And the vector code works the same way. Very nice. Um, so let's um, see what happens when we cut the background out of draw and put it in uh, setup instead so that the background is only drawn once. Um, now every time it draws uh, an ellipse down here in, uh, in the void draw, it's not going to get a background drawn on top of it. So it'll sort of show us the path that the projectile takes. So we get this nice parabola drawn, right? And if I wanted to actually take some measurements and stuff, um, this is a little bit, it's kind of hard to see there. So we can make, um, make the object quite a bit smaller, launch it that way. And that looks pretty good, right? So we started down here, we launched, and we took it across. Um, Let's actually, let's literally measure this. So, and when I'm looking across my screen, um, I'm measuring that line, it's about 16 centimeters. And I know that it's 800 pixels because that's what I set the size of the window to be. Um, so I can do 800 pixels divided by 16 centimeters, which is what I measured uh, using a, uh, holding a physical ruler, literally measuring the screen. Uh, so I get 50 pixels per centimeter. So for every centimeter of screen that I have, there's uh, 50 pixels, okay? Um, now, I could take that number that I got earlier, which was the horizontal range. Um, I found it to be um, 638 meters. And we can scale that to this distance right here, okay? Um, so, 50 pixels uh, per meter, and now I can measure, instead of measuring all the way across the window, I'm just going to measure to this point here. So, from the starting position to the ending position, um, I get about 12.8 centimeters. 12.8 centimeters. Okay, so uh, times 12.8, which means I get uh, 640 pixels from this position to this position. And actually that corresponds very closely to the horizontal range we got, um, which was 638 meters. Uh, so. Six forty 
divided by 638. Oops. Really 1.0 meter per pixel. Um, so on this scale, every pixel represents uh, one meter. Okay, so let's go over to P5 and see if we can get this guy to work. So for our position, we have 0, 0,500. I think that's what we had before, yep. For the velocity, we want, let's bring our screen back up here so we can see these numbers. Uh, 4.25, negative 7.36, no horizontal there's our uh, vertical acceleration okay um, Make this match our other code. I believe that's everything. So let's run this and see. And that happened to us on part three as well, where it sort of plays the previous sketch. And last time it worked when I copied and pasted into a new window. So let's see if that does anything. Cool. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so we got our projectile to work um, mathematically. We got it to work with uh, P3 and P5. And to close out the video, I'm going to mention a cool website called Open Processing. Um, great place to store uh, your sketches, to share your sketches. Uh, it's a really nice website. Um, a lot of the screen interactivity works great, so in this sketch I have it um, respond to the mouse, and it does uh, quite nicely. Uh, the big difference here uh, between working on open processing and working in um, like the standard uh, development environment is here when I create a new sketch, if I'm typing like void blah, and code and whatever and I make some errors and I run it I don't I don't really see any error there's no error screen or anything like that so that functionality is not there whereas if I you know do the same thing over here um, and I'm on this line it, it asks me you know am I missing a right curly bracket um, so it sort of has live um, error detection. Um, so when I'm typing in open processing, it's not really the best environment to type your code or to develop your code. It's really um, nice for uh, posting or sharing it, right? So keep that in mind as you use it. And uh, for our next video, I believe we're going to turn to uh, orbital motion. That's the goal anyway. So uh, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you next time.